for that introduction and welcome to you all attending in person and virtually to the first annual Restoration Torah Conference. <clears throat> we will uh, begin with a hymn. Uh, Charlotte uh, Erickson is going to play the piano for us. And uh, which hymn are we singing? What? Number seven. Uh, hymn books are there and uh, we'll do this sans conductor for now, but uh, go ahead. Yeah. Can I ask you to come offer a, an opening prayer for <clears throat> today's session? Oh. 
O oh God, the eternal Father, we are thankful that we could all gather here today, this morning. And we ask that each speaker will be able to be inspired and be guided, and that everything will go well and as planned. And do you say these things in the name of Jesus the Christ? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jordan. I need to uh, get some devices recording here. <laughs> All right. I've got audio and. <clears throat> All right. Uh, my name is Joshua Erickson. I'm with the Zara Hamlet Foundation. And I uh, just want to start with a few. Uh, comments this morning of explanation <clears throat> and also of thanks. Uh, we're very thankful to the Kimber Academy uh, for allowing us to rent this facility. Uh, they were, <clears throat> yes, they were <clears throat> uh, brave enough to risk the social shunning. <clears throat> and all of you are as well. Uh, so we're grateful uh, to you. We definitely wouldn't have a conference without. Uh, the participants here in person and also those uh, in virtual land. Um, big thanks to the presenters. Many of them have traveled a long distance, <clears throat> so uh, we'll announce them as they come, but uh, very grateful to all those presenters and um, uh, grateful uh, that they got their presentations to me so they could be printed after much hounding from me, so thank you for uh, your patience um, uh, and hard work. So. I want to thank also uh, those who helped prepare. And there's many people behind the scenes who helped to set up um, the audio, the visual, the tables, the chairs, prepare the food, and uh, and so on. So <clears throat> we definitely um, there's a lot of many hands involved in in this. So um, so thank you. And a round of applause, I think, for everyone. Okay. So a little word of introduction, uh, what we're, this is all about. Um, we, uh, the Zarahemla Foundation is just a nonprofit, non-denominational group. And our, our goal is to uh, educate people. One of, one of our goals is to educate people about the beautiful things contained in the scriptures and particularly in the Torah, which is uh, oftentimes uh, overlooked or seen as insignificant, um, superseded. Um, it's basically just there to show us uh, all the things that God has done away with so that we can be free. <clears throat> but the scriptures say that his word is, is our freedom. So, so Zarahemla Foundation has been celebrating the, the biblical feasts, um, Passover, Tabernacles, and so on. For the last several years, and we've had just a few families that have gotten together, and it's been a great, uh, great time, great fun. Uh, but last fall, uh, we decided to open up our Sukkot celebration, our Feast of Tabernacle celebration, to kind of a, a wider audience, and we had uh, a pretty good turnout. And that kind of encouraged us that there may be an interest uh, in these things in kind of broader circles. So, so this is our uh, first time that we are kind of opening up uh, the Feast of Sukkot, or the Feast of Weeks, um, as it's known, also known in Greek as Pentecost. And those of you who've probably read their website or read your scriptures, uh, even better, uh, know that this is, of course, the time when the Holy Spirit came upon uh, the early members of the church uh, shortly after Jesus' ascension. Peter was preaching uh, at the temple, and there's all these people there, and they were all there from, with different tongues, different languages. They're from different nationalities, and this is much like the uh, uh, our participants here. Not that uh, we speak different languages, but uh, we have opened this conference up to all the, the various branches of uh, the restoration. So there are people here with LDS backgrounds and some with... Um, various others there's actually quite a few uh, different representatives here and we hope that uh, this will be a unifying thing and also enlightening and, and educational 
Um, when, uh, so not only does this commemorate that event in the New Testament, uh, and I hope I'm not stealing any of the speaker's thunder too much, but this also commemorates anciently the time when the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai in fire and smoke, and lightning, and thunder, and revealed uh, the Torah to Israel. And we are Israel, and that covenant uh, which was made there um, still has application today because we are still Israel. And throughout the scriptures, God says uh, that his people at various times have forgotten the covenant that was made with him. But he has not forgotten, and someday we fully expect Israel to be gathered and all of those things that the scriptures talk about to be fulfilled. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so these things are definitely applicable, and that's what this conference is all about. When the Torah was first given at Sinai, uh, the Lord told Moses, go down and tell the people to prepare themselves for two days in preparation. So this Friday and Saturday conference, this is our two-day preparation, uh, you could say, for the uh, Feast of Sukkot, uh, which Shavuot, Shavuot, thank you, um, which will be on uh, Sunday. So um, now one other interesting thing um, about uh, the Feast of Shavuot is that this is considered by the Jewish people to be their wedding, their marriage to the Lord, Yahweh. <clears throat> now, uh, and that the covenant that was made then was a marriage covenant, and that the Torah was the marriage contract. Um, in uh, Jewish circles, there's a, there's a written document called the Ketubah, which outlines the conditions of the marriage, whatever those may be. And this was the Lord giving to Israel uh, his, or their ketubah. This is what I will do. This is what you will do. I will protect you. You will be my people uh, if, you, if you do these things, which I'm sharing with. And, uh, and we, as Israelites, uh, we accepted that. An interesting thing about, uh, kind of a similarity between the Jewish way of thinking about things and the, uh, the Mormon or the, the LDS, I'm going to say Mormon because it's broader, the LDS way of thinking about things is uh, that when we talk about redemption, redemption begins at baptism and kind of culminates with marriage, don't we? Believe that that's the, that's the highest of the, the ordinances that we expect to attain. <clears throat> and it was the same with Israel, but this is as, a, as, a, as an entire people. Their redemption began with their baptism, and that is when they were freed from Egypt by passing under the Red Sea. I know they went through dry, but the sea was on either side above them. And uh, Paul actually draws on this imagery in the New Testament says, Israel was baptized in the Red Sea. And then the Holy Ghost followed, which was represented by the cloud and the pillar of fire that followed them, that, was there, that led them through the wilderness. So it began with their baptism, and then they went through the wilderness for a time, uh, 50 days actually. And then they, uh, you know, they arrived at Sinai and they received uh, marriage. The proposal had happened quite a while ago, but this was, um, this was the marriage. <clears throat> now, a difficult thing to understand about this uh, is even though uh, the Lord at this time married Israel, Israel rebelled. And uh, it's heartbreaking thing to read, but the scriptures in Jeremiah talk about um, the Lord divorcing Israel. Um, but he stayed married to Judah. But Israel, the northern kingdom, was divorced. They were scattered. <clears throat> but we have a bridegroom, and we expect, we expect uh, a remarriage to happen. The bridegroom will come for the bride, uh, which is the church, which is part of Israel. And this is something that I want to point out as well. And I know some of the speakers will probably point to this as well, is that um, those, those, the church is grafted into Israel and not the other way around. Sometimes we think Israel is, uh, you know, going to join us, but really it's we as Gentiles, 
that have joined Israel. And uh, as Jesus said, uh, salvation is of the Jews. So important things to remember as we go through this. I'm over time already. Um, I do want to say one last thing. Uh, um, and actually, uh, if you'd let me borrow your book as well, Nathan. Um, as you hear the different uh, speakers speak, they have, they've been given freedom to say whatever is on their mind and on their hearts. And um, you may hear some very interesting things, and you may also hear some things that you disagree with a little. Um, but we want, to, uh, we want to not be offended. If there are things that, uh, that you don't disagree with, then let them go and take the things that are useful. And we want our belief to be defined by things that we're for rather than defining our belief by things that we're against. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to read uh, the dedication of the, uh, the conference journal here. So here it is, and this is the, uh, so, oh, let, me, uh, let me see if I can. Hmm. Where is... Oh, I don't know how to do that. Okay. Well, it's backwards in the, there, but Restoration Torah Conference. This is our, uh, somewhere there's a way to mi mirror the screen. I'll figure that out later. So this is the dedication, okay? To the Lord of the vineyard and to all the branches of the restoration, may you bring forth good fruit in the place you have grown. And may you never forget that it is not given to the branches to decide which should be kept and which pruned. It is the Lord of the vineyard who will declare.